Hey guys, welcome back to the CNSL Season 7 on Artosis Casts. Uh, we are going into Group G in the round of 32. Round of 32 almost done, only a couple more groups to go. Uh, for this particular group, we do have one substitute. There was one player that was going to play in the round of 32 that ended up having to pull out uh, and has been replaced. And that was Hani, who is a, a Terran player I like quite a bit. He has been in ASL before, but he's been replaced with a kind of similarly leveled uh, Terran player in Aubin. Uh, and you can see Aubin there. Um, now, Aubin, probably not quite as good as Hani, but very, very strong right now. Practices like crazy. One of those, uh, you know, top amateur Terrans really looking to make his way into ASL, but hasn't done it yet. The other players here, uh, of course, we have Miso, the Zerg player. Uh, he is the most experienced in the group by miles. He's been in a ton of ASLs. He's been around forever. Super, super aggressive Zerg. Uh, like, he actually... There's a lot of funny things about his play. I think I'll talk a lot more about him when we get into his match. Uh, but first up, we will have a Protoss versus Zerg. It's going to be Highway, uh, who did very well in ACS, making it into uh, the top four for Season 17's uh, lead up to ASL. And then we have Xiao Shui, who also made it in and uh, has just been... A fantastic Zerg player from China. Xiao Shui has really kind of set himself apart from some of these other Chinese Zergs while being very strong. Uh, he's the one that's really heavily delivering right now. So very cool stuff. Uh, I love this group. I'm looking forward to it. As far as who I think is going to advance, I think Miso is a big favorite in the group. Again, uh, by far the most experienced player. Who comes out with him? It's, it's actually a really hard one. I can I can see a lot of different ways that this can end up going down. Uh, and because it's best of one, man, your guess is as good as mine. I, I really do feel like anyone could come out of this. Uh, all right. Well, anyways, let's uh, let's get started. We'll go into game number one here in the bottom right of Radeon. We have our Chinese Zerg. It's Xiao Shui. And his opponent in this first match in the bottom left, none other than Highway. Uh, you know, Highway is, you know, obviously he did very well as far as uh, the ACS goes. That's the Afrika TV Challengers uh, League. And if you don't know about that, it's, it's an incredibly hard tournament for players who have not been in ASL. If you've qualified for ASL... Uh, or if you won the ACS tournament previously, you're not allowed to play in it anymore. But it's basically for the amateur up-and-comers. Like, for instance, uh, this season we had Xiao Shui, we had Highway, who were both in this group. Uh, we had Rich, who's like a 2700 MMR Protoss player. Uh, and we had uh, Tengu, who, and Tengu ended up winning. Tengu did make it into ASL, right? So very, very strong lineup. Obviously, Highway is a strong Protoss player. I've seen some of his games. I don't know if I've actually casted him on here on this channel. He kind of flies under my radar, but I, I have played him a few times. I have uh, seen a few of his games, but his style doesn't stick out in my brain, so I can't I can't say too much about the way that he plays. Um, yeah. So, anyway, Xiao Shui, on the other hand, I can say a lot about it. I've casted a lot of Xiao Shui games. Uh, you know, we've seen him around quite a bit, and he is one of the best performing. You know, like the 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 big three players in China right now are Mihu, Zhan Hun, and Xiao Shui, one of each race, which is kind of cool. Uh, but they're really performing extremely, extremely well. Uh, you know, Zhan Hun, Mihu, always well known. Uh, you know, always doing well. Zhan Hun getting to the finals of an ASL qualifier, Xiao Shui winning an ACS qualifier, and and you know. Uh, doing pretty darn well for himself. Looks like we have kind of a cannon rush going on by Highway, so I'm going to shut up about that for a moment, about the strong Chinese players. So he sets up the two pylons. There is a second probe coming, so this is real. This is serious. He's going to start trying to jump drones over. So you can push drones over sometimes, but let's see what this looks like because there's not really a lot of stuff here for them. Okay, he cancels that out. So what that was, I actually didn't check with my eyes, but uh, it, sometimes you put down a pylon so the drone can't land there, and then you cancel and you make the cannon. So he kills one of the probes. This is not going well right now for Highway. It looks like Xiao Shui 
should be able to hold on. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so another probe comes down. Oh my god. Okay, so already he's lost two probes. This this has been held. Sh like, Xiao Shui is completely kind of outclassing in this particular opening uh, highway. This is very, very bad for highway. Oh, that was a little bit. Ooh, he saves it. Okay. You get that one point of instant heal with Zerg, uh, which ended up saving it. But, yeah, he even cancels one. He knows that the sunk is going to be more than enough. There's damage being put on that one, so he just cancels it puts this out. He has lings. Doesn't even need those. Sunkins are way stronger than cannons. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can see, right? They deal 40, so no problem here whatsoever. Gets it down to two health, so that won't last very much longer. A bunch of lings going to be going across the map here. Highway trying to get his cannons up in time, but I tell you what, Xiao Shui, uh, he... Can he break in here? He might. It's only four probes. If he micros this well, he might be able to get through this wall and kill that cannon. Let's see. He goes after the probes. Gets two. Yeah, he's kind of getting in here. Okay, he goes down, and the probes do block the lings out. So that's something. Uh, kills off another one of the probes. This is a lot of probe deaths so far. Uh, oh my god, kills another. I'm surprised he's down here with the probes even doing anything. It looks like he's trying to maybe target that one. Uh, and does block on the ramp a little bit, but it doesn't get any kills. And that's going to be it. GG. Xiao Shui holding the cheese, counterattacking. I uh, will go to that winner's match. All right. So going into uh, our second match here, we have Miso in the bottom right of Radeon. And in the top left, we have Aben. Uh, be very interesting to see what the openers are. So there's, there's basically two phases here in a Miso game. What are the openers? And then what does Miso do? You know, obviously, uh, a lot of times you look at, okay, what is the Terran doing? But Miso is super, super aggro, right? Like, he's he's very good at his aggression. I mentioned that I would talk about him a little bit more in his game, and surprisingly, that was about five minutes ago I was saying that. Very quick game, number one. Uh, but, yeah, so as far as Miso goes, there is, he's kind of, like, teased and made fun of in the pro scene a little bit because he just he's so aggressive and it's kind of silly uh but here's the thing about miso like i have seen him now in the past like year to two years he hasn't done as well he was in a lot of asls before that but the past couple of years he's he's kind of fallen down a tier and i think that might be because of the one dimensionality of his play miso is a player that in the past at least if if I could just give him a, a moment, like I could pause the game and tell him, okay, now switch into macro. He would be like a round of eight Zerg, I almost feel like. Like his aggressive plays are really, really good. I've seen him get ahead of just about every pro in, in pro matches, right? Like he will get himself into a position where you're like, oh wow, this is winning right now. This is really good. Like you're playing against a top guy and, and you're ahead. But then he'll just keep attacking and keep attacking. So he'll take situations where he's super far ahead. You know, my old saying, when you get ahead, get further ahead. He literally will never do that. I've never seen it. I've never seen him get ahead and be like, okay, now we're going to drone up and take another base. You know, he'd be like, no, I need more lurkers and I'm going to shove them into the cannons. You know, it, that type of thing. So uh, he doesn't really have an off button to his aggression, which has been, in my opinion, the big problem with his pro career. Uh, now, as far as Aubin goes, uh, you know, I've, I've played Aubin a lot, but obviously that's only Terran versus Terran. He's just a very good Terran player. Um, I haven't, I'm trying to think, I don't think I've seen Aubin's Terran versus Zerg before. I do not believe. Uh, so yeah, I guess we'll just kind of wait and, and see what he's going to bust out here. Like, I assume it's like any top ladder Terran, he's going to have a good mixture of what he likes to play. Here, it looks like he's just going for a wall. He actually is getting a gas, but it's a very late gas. What? Okay, so that's really interesting. This is already... I was saying that we're going to look at what, what Miso does, and actually Miso is going for a very unbelievably fast third hatch here. Whereas Aubin got his gas before his command center. That is very uncommon. Now, there's not a good way to check this cross spawn. Okay, so the drone comes up to kind of check what's going on. When you see the wall, you kind of assume that it's going to be 
command center. And when the Overlord gets up here and sees the health on the command center, it's going to be very hard to differentiate this from uh, just a command center with, with no gas. So this is a fast factory. Dude, this is really weird from Ovid. I'm kind of getting some chills right now seeing this because it's like he gets the gas late, right? So it matters like how many SCVs you have on the patches, how quickly you're mining, how quickly you're going to get up, and then you pull SCVs off for gas. It really affects your income to get gas. But if he's spending literally just 100 minerals and one SCV off later to get this up so that it looks the same... So see this, he's going to fly in and he's going to see the command center done when he gets there. Which is what you would see if this came before this, right? So he's going to look at this and he sees Marines being made. Right now, Miso should be thinking, well, he doesn't actually, he should move up a little bit just to make sure. I can't believe he's not checking the mineral patches. That's shocking. Uh, but like it, it, it would look the same. This would look exactly the same as... You know, uh, any sort of uh, regular marine opener, right? And he's making marines out of the bunker, uh, out of the out of the barracks. So like, this could be an academy rush. This could be a plus one. It looks exactly like that, but it's actually a quick starport. It's a quick academy. This is really, guys. I, I haven't seen someone do this with the wall, with the production, with it being cross spawn. It makes so much sense what I'm looking at here. It's so confusing and makes so much sense. Now, this is a very quick plus one care piece. This is before the Spire, right? Like, well, he started the Evo before the Spire, but uh, it looks like Miso will probably go Crazy Zerg. This particular version of Crazy Zerg is incredibly strong, but because this is a teched out opening, there may actually be a window for Aubin to kill him. Uh, now, I obviously, we don't know exactly how this is going to go down. It's it's clearly a Valkyrie rush. Uh, and, yeah, we'll see if Valks are going to be able to, uh, like, make the difference. He's going to be able to shut down Mutalisks very well. But you're going to have to find a timing before they really get everything going because three gas ultra in this situation, like, th this particular build, I think, is one of the stronger three hatchery builds that there are and because his comsats are slow there's not a lot of reaction to it right okay he just scanned oh whoops that was the wrong one okay he scans the main he sees the spires done so i guess he's just going to start preparing for that we don't have the plus one yet uh we do have stim on the way second valkyrie is already que queued up all right so the valk gonna come out and yeah, I guess he's going to go after the Overlord. Yeah, no Scourge or anything ready. I guess he's got the timing of that pretty well down. Uh, but th this is actually probably pretty surprising. And in fact, he starts his plus one flyer carapace. So that actually makes some sense as well. Like, get that plus one flyer down because it's like, oh, God, there's Valks out right now. What is going on? Um, so, yeah, the, the plus one carapace over halfway done. Queen's Nest on the way. What an interesting game. Notice... All right, five mutas. We don't know how many mutas he's actually going to make. You, like, making mutas and making sure they have turrets is somewhat important. Look at how few turrets Aubin has right now. So few turrets. Huge deal, right? If he's just skipping turrets left and right, that's, that's a big deal for him. Now, the Scourge coming in for a flank. Dude, that was pretty good. He gets one. It almost looked like he was going to get two, but it seems like uh, the damage output of the Marines and Valks were just enough to kill off a couple of Scourge. So he has lost a couple of Mutas, but he kills a Valk. That's, again, very important. We have range on the way. We have plus one on the way. The plus one much slower than the plus one here. So there is going to be a Carapace upgrade advantage. Some Sunkins going up. He is going to have to make sure he has enough Sunkins to just hold the bio. Now, since range and plus one are not done, this is not as strong as, you know, you watch a lot of games, but normally the attacks come, other than the early five-minute attacks. Uh, they come and they have plus one in range. So, like, this is not that strong yet. Extra hatch on the way. Hive is going to be finishing up. He's going to... Plus two Carapace is starting. And, uh, of course, Chitinus is going to be gotten, uh, you know, Adrenal Upgrade for the Zerglings and Ultra Speed. As all those finish up, and then, of course, the plus two Carapace, we're going to get a sick power spike uh, from Miso. 
Now, Abin is doing some pretty good harassment here with the uh, with the Valks. And in fact, he just picked off two of them. Holy crap. Really good by Miso there. Abin is going to be really... He's lost like three Valks so far. That's, you know, that's painful. You, you want to build these up to such a level that you can actually almost utilize them like Corsairs, right? And just kill everything in the air. But, uh... Not the case. So far, the defense has been very, very strong here from uh, from Miso. He's got three sunks on high ground. You do have to be careful. As his bio comes down, he is going to have enough, actually. Oh, my God. He's going to lose another one. Oh, man. That is a lot of Valkyries lost already. Notice he is adding sunks. He's realizing, oh, God, this is actually going to be a big army. If he loses one of these bases, the odds of him winning the game go drastically, drastically down. Uh, he is going to make some more sunks. Oh, God. Okay, well, there's only one Valk here, so maybe... Oh, God. Look at this. That range upgrade helping out so much. He does not have the plus one attack yet. More Marines coming up. Can he hold on against this Bioforce? It looks like he can. Okay, the Valk has died. The Mutas are actually still here. They have that plus one carapace. That is really painful. Aben doesn't have anything going on. He d Yeah, okay. Well, that makes sense. He knew... Okay, that I have to explain this for a moment. So we'll just hold this for, for one second here. Uh, he knew what was going on, that it was crazy, sir. And if you play a teched out opening like this that doesn't have fast upgrades, you're never going to catch up. Like, look, he's minutes ahead on the plus two. Uh, so it's like the Zerg will just take complete map control and win. So he, he knows that he has to win with a timing attack. And that was the timing attack that he had. Uh, the Valks, like, he lost too many of them. If he had all of them, he would have cleared the Mutas so quickly. Even if he had lost two less, he would have cleared the Mutas so quickly, the bio may have broken the Sunks. So, yeah, a little bit of misplay there uh, from Abin, but you can see that Miso knows exactly what he's doing. Very good play. Very good build order choice as well, in my opinion. All right, so GG. Uh, Miso on to that winner's match. All right, well, it feels like we are a uh, speed running group G right now. <laughs> we have uh, in the top left here, Miso. Uh, definitely looking very strong there in the game against Abin. And in the bottom right, we have Xiao Shui blocking highways, cannon rush like super, super quickly, super, super efficiently, and just counterattacking for a victory. So the Zerg players. Definitely doing much better than their opponents so far today. We're going to go on to Citadel uh, for this Zerg versus Zerg. You know, the fastest matchup in the game by miles. So we'll see if this one is going to be just as fast. And, you know, as far as these two players go, hmm, I mean, Miso's a pro Korean Zerg. You would kind of lean towards him. But I do feel like this is one of the matchups that we have seen over the years. The Chinese Zergs do very, very well in. Like, I feel like Chinese Zergs overall are not that good Zerg vs. Terran, but are uh, exceedingly good at Zerg vs. Protoss and Zerg vs. Zerg, right? So those are kind of more aggressive matchups. And in general, most of the Chinese Zergs are kind of aggressive players. Xiao Shui, absolutely chief amongst them. So, you know, let's, let's see what types of openers we're going to have. You can already see it here. We're going to have a little pool first. Uh, looks like a nine pool here from... Excuse me, from, uh, uh, oh my god, my brain stopped me for a minute there, from Miso. Uh, here, this is a very fast gas into spawning pool, uh, from Xiao Shui. So, definitely a very different looking overpool gas, like that, like, I, gas overpool, something like that that we saw. This is, it's really weird. He's gonna have way more gas than Miso. As you can see, he's gonna have about a hundred more gas. Yeah. He's going to have 100 more gas. So, I mean, that's pretty significant, right? That can mean something like he gets Zergling speed but has the same amount of mutas. It could mean one more muta, right? There's a lot of different things that uh, Xiao Shui might be looking to do with this. I've seen this build before, the super fast gas variety. So, uh, let's see if he starts that layer right away because he can go layer speed immediately. Layer. And let's see if he goes speed as he gets up to that 100 minerals. He's making some Zerglings. No Zergling speed. Might just be uh, saving up that gas for that extra Mutalisk. Notice how he is way down in drones right now. <laughs> He's down three drones. Kind of a crazy thing. Uh, Ling's coming over here from Miso. So he's sending eight Lings over. He is getting his own Zergling speed. He does have his own layer. 
So that is a two muted deficit that we might end up seeing. Shao Shui sets up his little Kong cave here, but Misu has more Ling, so he might just attack in. He does for a second there and loses one Ling very inefficiently. Sets up his own little Kong cave. So, you know, he can he doesn't know the exact build of his opponent right now. And look at this. Shao Shui is going to put down a secondary hatchery in his main base. So the secondary hatchery, like, look at the amount of gas that he's having, right? Uh, obviously, he's going to throw down a spire that's going to cost him some gas, but it looks like he just wants to hatch suddenly. I think I saw this build in ASL once, if I'm not mistaken, where, like, you pop out so many mutas and then you, like, make a couple scourge or something. You just immediately go across the map because you have all this extra larva. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see uh, Miso right now. He's taking that secondary hatchery, but at his natural since he has that map control. We're now at the same amount of drones. Shashui, of course, getting into that later, so you can see, uh, you know, maybe a little bit behind as far as those minerals go. And oh, you know what? I think we might have had speed canceled by by miso because their gas count has suddenly uh closed up a little bit also uh one drone was pulled off of this gas for a little bit which is pretty common uh after you make the layer with a lot of these like nine pool type builds a lot of times you do pull a, a drone off for a little bit it's it's a very tight economic balance because you have so few workers now the spire is going to be finishing up he's going to have to pull these lings back you do not want the mutas to come out and get free pot shots all right, so right now, Miso with two. And we have four on the way down here. Five on the way down here. Uh, and Overlord's finishing up for Miso, so we're going to see a few more for him as well. In fact, they might they might end up at the same place between the the speed cancel. You can see these are non-speeded Zerglings, uh, as well as I think Miso just didn't mine with only two drones there. I think he stayed on three, which uh, allowed him to pick up a little bit more gas. So six Muta, two Scourge from Shao Shui. He is definitely getting very aggressive, and he needs to as well, because see this extra geyser? As Miso sends drones down, he can start popping out so many Scourge at that point that he's going to be able to overwhelm. So there is a very slim timing here for Shao Shui where he must pick up either massive damage or the victory. Like, he, he basically, the second gas is going to force his hand completely. So five mutas up here, six mutas, four scourge, going up against six mutas. So obviously the four scourge make a huge, huge difference, but there are scourge being made on the other side from Miso. Miso pops out some of his own here and a lot of micro going down. I think Miso just held it. Yeah, he's got like two additional ones, some more scourge coming up. And of course, with the additional gas being mined right now, he's gonna be able to get a ton more scourge. You can see Miso's micro very strong. The Lings of Shao Shui do end up killing some drones. So actually, Miso gets pretty low in drones here. That's pretty significant. Like, the the Lings did a lot, man. Twice as many workers here for his opponent. Actually, hold on. Shao Shui just made this very interesting indeed. We have three drones being made. Uh, Shao Shui has lots of minerals right now. In fact, he's going to go ahead and throw down a third hatchery at his natural base. More mutas being made on both sides. Uh, I guess the thing is, if you have to make those drones right now as, as Miso to refill, and you don't have the mineral bank to make uh, mutas, and thus you have to make more Scourge, uh, you know, obviously Scourge are very good if they hit, but if Shao Shui has the micro to not get hit, I believe he's going to be slightly up in Mutalisks, right? So right now he has five, and we have four over here. And he's still droning. Hold on, hold on. So we have another one. So five mutas. Six. And of course, another one about to pop out on both sides. So like a slight mutalisk advantage right now. Not mining from his gas here yet, but I think he will throw down that, throw these drones in that geyser pretty quickly. Look at the, the path being taken. Oh God, he finds some overlords. Got to make sure you don't hit them with the Scourge. Now the Scourge are actually in the group, so he's have to, he has to micro against it. Sometimes I make fun of people for doing that. In this case, you definitely have to. So he kills one overlord and then starts to fly away because, oh wait, see, he sees with his lings the mutas are up here. He should have turned around and went and killed more, I feel like, 
right? Because there's like four mute, four overlords up here. That's really painful for Miso to end up losing those. Either way, uh, this geyser's ready. He has the gas ready to go into the hatchery immediately. Xiao Shui is up three drones. He's up 10 supply. Dude, I tell you, I really thought Miso had a nice uh, a nice situation when he flew, when uh, you know Xiao Shui flew across the map. But those Zerglings made all the difference. And now Xiao Shui, like, I think Xiao Shui is just going to win this. He's up three drones. He's just got more supply. He's got his gas mining. Look at this. Look at this group of mutas. Nine mutas right now. And it's seven mutas. Obviously, a lot of Scourge coming out. But that economy is a lot weaker for Miso. Some Lings going across the map. Man. Uh, you know, it, we're about to have an Overlord pop out here for Chao Shui, so he's even going to pop up even more. Look at that. It has enough for three more mutas. I don't think he'll even make three. I think he'll make two in Scourge. No, I guess he does make three. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Prefers those mutas over the Scourge. Of course, no upgrades for the mutas. Once upon a time, you always saw, like, plus one carapace and stuff like that. You don't really see it as much anymore. Uh, people are so good at finishing each other in Zerg vs. Zerg, that extra gas. It's like, if your opponent just has mutas, you're screwed. So, here we go. Miso's going across the map, okay? He's got 11, right? No, that's 9. I'm sorry. I can't even, can't even count. Plus a million Scourge. Okay, over here, we have 12 mutas, and then not a million Scourge, but a lot of Scourge. Okay, eight Scourge against like 20 Scourge. Okay, let's see. And even another Muta coming up. So a lot of this will come down to Micro. Oh my God, that's a lot of Scourge, guys. Let's see how many he actually ends up getting. And he has actually connected a lot with the Scourge so far. In fact, Miso, I believe, has more Mutas now suddenly. But there's still Scourge from his opponent. Oh man, that is painful for Shao Shui. He was ahead. Oh, very close, actually. And in fact, Miso is down in mutas now. I think Xiao Shui actually is going to finish this one. A very, very big deal. Wow, Xiao Shui winning this group would be phenomenal. Oh, God. Ling killed all the drones over here during that as well. Not only did he end up winning that engagement, but he kills, like, all the drones again. And a lot of the drones were at the natural. You can see 5 to 17. Wild stuff. And Miso's coming across the map, but there's literally 0% chance for him to win. I think he's flying across and just seeing, like, uh, if if every Scourge hit perfectly, maybe... Yeah, he could win if every Scourge hit perfectly, right? And he doesn't get by any Scourge. Like, you just kill six damage mutas immediately. Something like that. A little bit of Miss Micro there. You've got to bring those Scourge in. And here they come. Let's see what those hits are like. All right, pops out more of his own Scourge. Xiao Shui eating some of them. Flies in. Going to deal some damage to those Mutalisks. And that is going to be that. There's nothing left here for me. So he's going to GG. Because he knows he can count the Muta stack well enough to know that there's no real chance remaining. A big victory here for Xiao Shui. Holds off uh, Miso, the consummate pro, and GG. All right, so we have Xiao Shui going up in first place. Next, time for the losers match. It's going to be Highway against Aubin in a Protoss versus Terran. Let's get into it. Up here in the top right of Blitz Y, we have Highway. And in the bottom right, we have Aubin. So we're on Blitz Y, right? Like this is a two player map. So definitely Protoss has, uh, you know, the opening advantage. Really, there's a lot of options here for Highway as to how he wants to play. But, <laughs> and the thing is that it's a good thing for Protoss. But at the same time, we saw that Cannon Rush just get absolutely crushed as Highway maybe not as good as some of the early game kind of cheesy, aggressive plays. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, but definitely he didn't look very good with the cannon rush, uh, you know, against Xiao Shui. We'll see what he's able to do here against Aubin. One thing to mention is that, yeah, look, he's not even sending a, a probe. So he, it looks like he might just skip the gas rush, which is, I've talked about it a million times. I do think that it is categorically a mistake to not dictate the flow of the game completely because you can do it so easily for less money than it costs Terran to remove it. 
but it is what it is. You can make whatever choice you want, and if you feel more comfortable, if you feel like your chances are better, even if that is statistically not going to be the case, if it mentally is the case for you, then it probably is the case, right? That kind of makes sense. Like, you got you to gotta do something that you're happy with doing. Uh, so I guess that's going to be what we see, and in fact, it's going to be a Nexus first here from Highway, so can't, can't blame him too much on that, I think. What I was going to say, though, is because Aubin is like a hardcore ladder grinder, uh, he will have played against like things like offensive gas a million billion times. Nexus first a million billion times, right? So there's a difference between practicing with practice partners and practicing on the ladder. And like the more abusive the build is, the more you hit it on ladder. Like the ladder is very, very, very heavily abusive, cheesy stuff. You know, whether that is Nexus first, proxy gateway, you know, anything like that. And sometimes I talk about it when we see it at the pro scene or at, at, at the, you know, it, like if you see an ASL player, it's like, okay, he might actually not be as good as holding this because the people he plays with every single day, the best in the world don't do this type of build as much, right? So Aubin is very, very prepared for something like a Nexus first. He's gonna get up here. He is going to see that it's a double gate in, well, we'll see because Highway's micron like frantically, but it is a Nexus first, <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Nexus first into two gateway. So at this point, we're all pretty sure you're not supposed to rush. Nexus first two gate before gas. The two gate before gas gets those zealots out really quickly and you just, you're really like safe, right? So it goes two gate, gas core, uh, and then you make two zealots and the zealots will basically come across the map to make sure that uh, you have to like have your SCVs in front of your Marines while you rush. And then they'll run back and they'll run to the side so they can flank. And then you have Dragoon Probe basically here. You have Zealots here and they just run away if you chase them. Uh, and it'll build more Dragoons. Once they get four goons out, it's held already, right? So yeah, that's kind of what it comes down to. Uh, anyways, in this particular case, Aubin set up for a gasless expansion anyways, which I think is a good way to play a two-player map if your opponent doesn't scout because they always could still have proxy gates and... If they're not scouting, they're probably doing something like a Nexus first, and you're not very far behind with a build like this. So in fact, in this particular case, Aubin will have probably the same or more workers. And part of that is this little Marine push that we've had here, right? He actually did end up getting a probe, so that's kind of huge. One Zealot out here going to kind of push everything back, and you can see that he skipped the second Zealot. He read that this was not going to be uh, a full-on push, and in fact, only getting one Dragoon. So I think he just wants to make a Robo right away here. Watch. He'll make a robo now. Uh, there it is. Okay. This and everything we're seeing here is like pretty standard. This is all like pretty normal. We see this in lots and lots of games. Aubin is probably going to think that it's that. We'll see, uh, you know, what he does. He's getting two, uh, two factories up. There's actually some very cool three factory plays going on right now. Uh, in this matchup. And I'm not sure if we're going to end up seeing that here. Uh, in this particular case, a lot of times you go to factory armory uh, and then into your engineering bay. I think that's probably what we'll see from Aubin to set up a, a stronger mid game. Okay, there's the engineering bay. The engineering bay is actually a little bit faster than he maybe needs it, but that's okay. He might be afraid that this is, because the probe was microing so hard here, he might be afraid that this was insta DT. Right? Maybe InstaDT needs it that quickly against. Okay. Uh, and there is that armory as well. Yeah. So this is all, again, really standard stuff. And being like a, a, a player that plays on the ladder so much as Aubin, he will have a lot of practice with this exact build. And in fact, even against this exact build. Because this is such a common play from Protoss. Okay. So right now, by the way, and I, I mentioned this before, like... This build is not necessarily like disadvantaged against uh, the Nexus first two gate because Nexus first with the two gateways, you end up skipping some probes and you can see right now, Aubin somehow actually is even ahead <laughs> by a couple of workers. So pretty darn good for him. Anytime Terran is equal to or greater than Protoss and workers, you feel extremely good, extremely good. Uh, that's it, it's it's a huge thing for Terran to be able to equal or, or be better in that in that regard. Normally, Protoss does get ahead in workers. Normally, their nexuses are a bit quicker and all that, especially if it's nexus first. Now, the third nexus is going to be in this forward position for highway. 
observer coming across. The forward position Nexus first, I am not a huge fan of. Uh, or not Nexus first, oh my god. Uh, the forward position third Nexus on this map, because, right, we've talked so much about it, we've seen it so many times. Terran likes to five factory push right up this mid lane that's so thin that Protoss can't flank. And then this Nexus just dies every time. Even if the push doesn't end up winning the game, you get this Nexus, like, always. Because the only place Protoss can engage is, like, here. And the thing is, you can hit the... You can hit the Nexus from, like, over here, right? Like, it's not very hard to kill this Nexus off. So I'm a little bit surprised he takes that. I think this one's superior. I think this one's way superior. Uh, but they are a little bit out of position as well. So we'll we'll see what the uh, whole idea is. Siege mode is on the way here for Aubin. He has his comm sats up. I don't believe I've heard a, a scan yet. And he is going to go up immediately into five factory play. Kind of moving his siege tanks. You can see he's got a spotter depot up here. Okay, we got the scan. The first scan is on the main. And the next one is on the third. Oh, I'm surprised he scanned here. That's really surprising to me. So he scans this and he sees that it's kind of like going into uh, Gateway Man. And, uh, you know, it, oh, a Stargate as well. Okay, so this looks like it's going to be a rush up to Arbiter. Right? Wait, no. What? Oh, no, there is a Temple Archives. Okay, I was like, that would be the weirdest carrier build. Like, legs before carriers and stuff. Anyways, uh, looks like Highway going to poke in a little bit. Going up to six factory here now. You know, I do like Arbiter play very much against the five factory, but it is a little bit slow, Arbiter. You know what? It might end up working, and here's why. Okay, I've, I've gone over this in a few of the casts that we've had of TVP in this matchup talking about how Arbiter play is generally good against five and six factory timings. So the main focus of the Arbiter player is to prevent the close turret, right? So none of this is buildable, okay? So you need to get a turret here. This, If you get a turret up here as Aubin, you'll probably win against the Arbiter player. But if the Arbiter player can just make you use up your scans and prevent the turret, then eventually the cloak the, the cloak that Arbiter adds to your army will actually be what ends up holding the push, right? So take a look at the comm sets. We have zero and we have two approximately, right? He's going to have one here. So he'll have about three scans. I would actually, I almost feel like making a single DT here would be really good as well. Just like start forcing some scans out. He puts a forward turret here. This you always want to do. Just producing heavily. Speed and mines on the way. We actually don't have Goliaths mixed in. What a great read from Aubin. There's not a shuttle out. So, like, there's no reason to buy any of those. He has a ton of gas, but the Goliath, just for its cost, is not as good as Vulture Tank. Okay, so he's coming through super quick. Again, you must prevent a turret from going up over here. That That is, like, one of the very main things. Notice how he starts a turret right away. You will see him make sure that this does not go up. He starts sending his army in. In fact, gets his slow zealots on top of a lot of these siege tanks. Kind of surprised. Kills off the SCV. Targets that SCV forcefully. Oh, he's actually pushing too hard. This was too much. Uh, or was it? That looked like too much to me, but he's actually getting a lot of the tanks. Okay, gonna end up pulling back, but he trades basically his whole army. And that was about eight or nine goons that he traded for an additional four to five siege tanks. Uh, and now he only has zealots walking up. So Aubin is going to absolutely slaughter. Dude, if he had pulled back... Like, his Arbiter is almost there. If he just uses the first sellouts, pushes everything back, gets the SCV, pulls back, then he's fine. But look at this. Because he lost all his goons and he already had zealots being made, and they don't even have the leg upgrade, now they do, after that. But now he's going to lose this, and he's going to lose, like, the turret's getting up. That's the worst place you could ever build the turret, because the siege tanks are almost killing the SCV and the turret while it goes up. Uh, but that was a huge mistake from Highway. That was a huge, huge mistake. That is absolutely not what you need to do here. You just need to slow it down and utilize... You know, you, your opponent will run out of commsats. You're running in one cloaked cell out at a time to deal with his army. You have to scan. You simply have to scan against it, right? And you're never going to get a turret up in that case. But now he's playing this very tough position, right? A scan goes down. He's able to save a bunch of the scans. The, the cloak just started. And, I mean, he's even... His vultures are attacking Dragoons at this point, man. Like, this is not looking good for Highway. I think Highway is just about out of this game right now. 
Uh, the missile turrets are getting up. The siege tanks are rolling forward. This one, Nexus, is almost gone. Worker count, very similar. Supply, very similar. That is almost always Terran favored, unless we're at uh, carriers. Yeah, not liking this position for Highway. Okay, Highway flying in here once again. See, he's trying to utilize some of that cloak plus sellout play, but the turrets are already up, and now we actually have, uh, you know, the, the Goliaths out here to try to pick off. Oh, my God, he's going to pick off uh, as well, that Arbiter. And Recall was on the way, so it looks like that was maybe the last idea here from Highway, but now he's just going to run in with the units that he has left. And he is going to pick off at least two siege tanks. But it looks like that's going to be about it. We should be seeing GG. GG! All right. <laughs> Highway is eliminated. So now we go to the final match with Highway already eliminated and Shaoshui already advanced. One of Abin and Misa will move on to one of those final three spots in the round of 16. It's going to be a Terran versus Zerg. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, yeah, that starts right now. In the bottom left here of a retro, we have none other than Aben. And his opponent in the bottom right, beating him the first time they played tonight. It's Miso. All right. Uh, exciting game. It's been, This has been the fastest group by miles, <laughs> by the way, right? Everyone's dying super fast. We had a Zerg vs. Zerg in there as well in the winner's match. So, yeah, it's it's been a pretty fast night. Hoping that we can get a slightly longer game here uh, in a TVZ than the first one. The first TVZ, how long was that? Like, I mean, Hive was on the way and, and Terran gave up. So, not sure what we're going to end up running into here. But, uh, you know, I, I imagine, again, a kind of aggressive, very decisive type of opener from Miso. And we shall see about that. Uh, it looks like immediately Aubin going to send down his SCV and he's going to do a wall. So, yeah, very good to see. The, this is a great position to wall on retro uh, because it does give you a Zergling tight wall if you want. And it, it, you might actually hear. Here's a little something we can talk about in the early game. I just said it gives you a Zergling tight wall if you want. Could there be situations in which you don't want a Zergling tight wall? First off, what he's doing gives you a very efficient Zergling tight wall. But there can be situations where you actually do not want your wall to be Zergling tight. Sometimes you would like to have one hole in it so that you can walk in and out more easily and not have to lift off your barracks. If it's, if it's completely tight, you will lose production time on your barracks uh, by going in and out, right? So it's just something to take into consideration. Uh, obviously, you know, if it's not Zergling type, it only has one hole. It's still not that hard to hold on against even mass Zerglings. Uh, just something to keep in mind. And there are different uh, building layouts that you can utilize. Like, for instance, if you wanted to make one hole here, you'd put the first depot here. You'd put the barracks directly underneath. You'd put a depot under the barracks. In between the depot and the bottom of the barracks, you'd have a hole that Marines or SCVs or whatever could walk through. Even though it's the same stack of buildings, a different order makes it completely different. All right, anyways, uh, a very quick scout here from Miso. And as that drone comes in, he turns around his SCV immediately. And I think he will just send that cross map because you're pretty aware of what's going on. Starts his second depot here. His SCV stays on the inside. That must be nice. Uh, and yeah, the Marine going to go ahead and push that drone back most likely. Good micro there from Miso. Finds Aubin's SCV being a little bit unlucky. So yeah, that's the most frustrating RNG in the whole world right there is when your SCV decides to build on the side where it gets attacked. Uh, now, the command center is going up. The depot finishes, and the SCV actually pops out on the inside. So that's kind of nice. And he gets a good scout off. Seeing that already at 256, we have that layer on the way. So just a pretty standard uh, two-hatch layer opener here, probably just in the Mutalisks. be surprising if there's anything else. And what are we going to see here from Aubin? He starts his gas pretty darn quickly. Not as quickly as he did in our previous TVZ. That kind of got me excited on Radeon. But yeah, that's that's exactly what it looked like. Starts his engineering base. So this is going to be a very fast plus one attack from Aubin. Uh, and yeah, we'll see if he goes for the four barracks play. That's that's by far the most common. SCV trying to stay alive. He wants to continue to get good scouts. Because you do get your academy a little bit later with this build. You can scan in time to see Lurker. But 
you know, it, it, it's, it can be a little bit nerve wracking. If you can keep this guy alive until layer finishes, then you're like super safe and you know it's Mutalisks basically. Now he didn't get to quite do that. And you know, if there were a player to go like two hatch lurker here, Miso would be one of those players that would risk something like that. But honestly, I think here against Aubin, he looks at, he says, uh, uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm a better player here, right? Like we can play a little bit more standard. Don't have to take as many risks. Whereas let's say he was playing against like JYJ or something. We might have a Hydralis down on the way right now to try to catch him off guard for that victory. Now, four Marines up at the front, so that will hold on against about a million Zerglings. Uh, plus one is already on the way. The Academy going to be finishing up. That's actually a pretty fast Academy, so... Uh, yeah, he'll be he'll be pretty safe with that overall. Second barracks has been started, and we'll see if he adds uh, two more barracks to that coming up pretty shortly. That's again the very most common play. It 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 just kind of has to do with what economy you can get up to and how much money you can get before you have to build missile turrets. Right, that's the huge cutoff point. Like you produce SCVs pretty much nonstop until. Uh, you have to build missile turrets, and you can add barracks until you basically have to add missile turrets, right? So uh, he's going to be able to add another one here. And some people go for the five racks, but it's a little bit all in against the two hatch muta. Uh, the uh, comsat goes down, and he actually starts stim a little bit later, right? So he got the academy super fast, but did not utilize it for fast scan or... Uh, for fast stim, which is kind of kind of interesting. I guess he's just building up a little bit of medic energy. But yeah, saving that money, getting an extra SCV, that's always a good thing. Now, uh, yeah, plus one, a little bit over halfway done. Bunker coming up at the wall. Very, very standard normal stuff. Looking over at Miso's base. We heard a scan right there at the natural. Natural is generally where you want to scan to see because the rally point is almost always here. The drone count will get cut here before it'll get cut here. Like this just gets saturated and then left, right? Uh, and yeah, the third hatch is just a gamble <laughs> if you try to scan something like that. It looks like Miso already starting a fourth hatchery up here at that natural of the top right. Barracks floating down. It is that four barracks play as anticipated. Range on the way here. For Aubin, has a couple missile turrets down here, just enough to push these mutas back for now. Notice that there are drones being made, by the way, and a lot of them being made and a lot of them being sent up. So this is kind of a greedy play uh, from, from Miso, okay? Like, some players play like this where they say, okay, you know, I'm going to make enough mutas to make it look scary, and you're going to continue to build turrets and kind of play defensive, but actually I'm droning, and he's droning Super hard, guys. And he is getting plus one air attack, so he's going to go back into Mutalisks. But a play like this is very strong for Zerg if you can pull it off, right? Terran has to get a certain minimum amount of turrets to make sure the Mutas don't just fly in and kill him. But the fact that he went five, skipped him for quite some time, droned up like crazy. Look at that, 32 against 34 drones. And then back into the Mutalisks. Uh, like, I love this type of play. I think it's really, really strong. It's something that absolutely should be mixed in. Uh, and yeah, he's going to have that plus one attack soon anyways as well. Now, Aubin sitting out front here. You know, you want to act like you're going to attack. He has range. He has plus one. This is a very strong army. It's a, it beats this army 100% easily. Uh, obviously, as more come up, then he has to take that in consideration. Uh, the Lurker upgrade coming. The Queen's Nest coming as well. A full group of 11 Mutas now. So Misu's going to stack those up and we're going to see if he gets anything done with them. Ooh, get some good damage on that medic. Gonna pull that back. Gotta be careful. You know, if you have any units that kind of trail it, that's what Miso's looking for right now. He's looking for anything that kind of strays in front a little bit. And, you know, he's gotten not a lot of pick off so far, but he's just stalling him out. Now, two star ports are on the way for Aubin. Look at that. Excellent, excellent drones. The mute is flying in and looking for those kills. Okay, he gets rid of a medic. That's pretty nice. Does lose a muta doing that. So, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but just something to note. Plus one armor, uh, a little bit over a third of the way done. And evolution chamber, hive coming up. That lurker upgrade almost done right now. 
Ooh, a little missed targeting there when he attack moved. Uh, did target his own Marine. Loses a few more. He's got more than enough to move out. Lurker upgrade just finished. Do we actually have Hydras? Okay, one there. Okay, three here. So he should be fine. If Abin makes a beeline to top right, there is a chance. Oh, no. Never mind. Two more being morphed. And in fact, he scans up here. So he, he's checking what those defenses are, if he can hit. And truthfully, looking at this, like right now, I'm looking at this game. And Abin is playing a very standard, very good TVZ. Like everything you look at, you're like, oh, yes, he's very good at StarCraft, right? You can see good macro, good turrets. He's adding turrets now. That's very, very smart because as Muta's finish, as Lurker's finish, Muta's should counterattack the main base. I'm actually surprised he's still in here doing this. He actually should go down here, attack here, and realize there's turrets and maybe look for somewhere else. That's like an important play once you have the Lurkers out. But it looks like he's playing a more aggressive game where he's almost trying to bait. See, these are going to be hold position Lurkers just out of range. So he'll probably bring the Muse up. Uh micro a little bit and try to get the marines to follow in because if you get a hold position lurker trap on a group this big you just basically win the game as zerk or maybe he's saying okay now go attack me because my mutas are out of position you know there's a lot of different ways that you can sometimes get them to walk into your trap not to say that Aubin will i think Aubin is, is smart enough to just sit here and wait for his star ports but anyways back to what i was saying like uh, you look at how Aubin's playing he's playing very well it looks good but I think Miso has played like a pretty much flawless game here, right? He did that droning earlier that I mentioned. Uh, right now, he's already getting his consume. He's got a trap set up, so that's kind of extra. You don't have to do that. He's completely safe everywhere at the moment. And he's even getting a greater spire, which can be a very interesting play here as well. He still has a lot of mutalisks left over. Sometimes what happens is... The vessels come out, and if they haven't been attacking the mutas with the vessels, they'll irradiate lurkers and defilers instead, right? Which are actually better targets in a lot of ways. But if your opponent went for that greater spire, then suddenly they can make these into guardians like over here and really harass your base. Uh, and then you won't really have irradiates. So it's like, well, do I make wraiths to clear that? Do I wait for more irradiates? Do I try to bait them in? It's just, it's a very annoying thing to deal with. So it does give him a lot of flexibility. I love to see it. I think it's something we're going to see more is the Greater Spire. And the thing is, when you see it right now, at this point in the game, where it's not a Guardian Rush, a lot of times they don't even end up making the Guardians. It's kind of a situational thing, right? So a couple of Radiates go down, and he's going to get two of these, but there's four total, so a lot of stacking going on in here as well. The Marine's getting into position. He might, If he thinks that's three, he'll attack. So that's one, and that's three. Oh, Dark Swarm goes down. <laughs> if he had waited on that, he wants to kill the Sunken here. That's actually totally fine. I think that's that's worth a few Marines. Um, but yeah, that's kind of funny. If he waits, then he might actually get more kills. Anyways, a little counterattack as Aubin's trying to take a third base. It gets canceled out. Aubin taking the top left as well. But Miso still kind of out positioning him. Hasn't utilized that Guardian tech, nor do I think he will at this point, even though he still has these Mutas. I think it's time for the Mutas to actually go either up here or over here as anti-drop defense. Uh, they're going to be very useful as that still. Very good against incoming dropships, but not a lot else. And in fact, dropships are on the way, right? This is pretty standard stuff. It going two, drop two vessels or four vessels into dropships. Uh, and in fact, this time it's six vessels into dropships is incredibly strong. Uh, he is scanning around a little bit. It is going to be ultralisk tech coming up here from Miso. So a lot of lurkers bro there as well. He's absolutely not getting broken. We'll see if those uh, two dropships are able to get anything done. Is he going to make more? Sometimes you go four. In fact, third starport on the way. He's going to land and make a physics lab uh, almost certainly. Really solid play from Aubin. Like, this is just a very, very good Terran play. Excellent to learn from, I would say. But Miso just hasn't... He hasn't misstepped at all. Like, he's getting irradiated a little bit, losing a few units. That's fine. But he canceled this base out. He's taking his own fourth. There's a lot of very good things happening right now for Miso. And not that he just wins the game from these things, right? But, like, as you get into Ultra Defiler and you have four bases... It becomes very hard for Terran to keep up. And in fact, look, he's plaguing the vessels. He realizes that the only thing really between him and victory right now are going to be vessels. So if he can reduce that vessel count, that's going to be huge. By the way, 
is he going to make the physics lab? I was talking about that earlier. Uh, you know, when they go ultra, a lot of people like to go battle cruisers, and it is very, very good, but we don't see it as of yet. It might just be more vessels. Imagine that. Like, it gets so hard to control vessels. Like, a lot of pros feel like you can't, and anyone that actually plays Terran, like, to macro everything, move around the map, micro, and hit irradiates, it's hard to manage more than about six vessels, right? Like, you'll see pro games where they have 12 vessels, and, like, they're just getting plagued. They all have super high energy. They're not casting many spells. And when they do start casting spells, the minerals peak up really fast. So, uh, yeah, it's it gets really hard to uh, end up controlling them. So, like, three starport vessels kind of crazy. Not that it's bad. Like, you want to spend your gas... So even, like, getting one Irradiate off can be worthwhile. Okay, so a nice drop. The, this drop coming a little bit late, and there's no Nidus here, but there is a Nidus here. So he's going to pop out, and Ultras are very good against drops. So he throws down a Dark Swarm first, running all the way forward with the Lurker. Yeah, let's see if he gets there on the Firebats. No, he doesn't actually have any detection here. Looks like he is going to have to pull back. Gets a big army into position here as well. These are four Lurkers, and throws down the Dark Swarm there also. Miso. Crossing every T and dotting every I right now. Doing a fantastic, fantastic job. Uh, in the meantime, Aubin is macroing super well. He's got four bases. I guess this one's not mining yet. The three starports. Okay, he is getting into those battle cruisers as well, which is good to see. Uh, you know, the, the battle cruisers might be something that can save him. But as you're going towards battle cruisers, you got to take into consideration like Zerg is getting bigger and bigger like they're getting all their gas all their upgrades and everything right so the battle cruisers alone aren't going to stop the zerg you have to do a bit more than that Ooh, kind of good sniping you have to do things like continue to keep pressure on and utilize the battle cruisers sometimes you can utilize them defensively offensively harassment based with the army like there are a few different ways but defilers are useful against them so that could be a bit a bit tricky so right now lands just outside the vision there of miso miso's got a lot he's not I don't think that this is that scary for him. Scans to kill the Lurker. Okay, but did take some damage there. Oh, these Defilers not being utilized. But does it even matter? We have four Carapace. Well, it is two attack against four Carapace, so pretty even. Dark Storm goes down, and that'll get cleaned up. But in the meantime, looks like he does push in here as well. The Fire Bat on the drones is very exciting, because since there's a lot of drones in there. But it looks like that'll be cleaned up as well. So you can see the supplies kind of equaling out here. And that is always good for Zerg in like every single matchup. Uh, that Zerg supply is so, so efficient. So right now, Miso absolutely with an advantage. It is four base versus four base. So still some chances for Aubin. But when you start having to defend rather than attack, that's where you know that you're getting pretty close to a loss. All right, so the Ultras go ahead and surround. Kill that bunker off very quickly. Going to be hard to clear this out, especially missing shots up to the high ground. Going after the SCVs there a little bit as well. Irradiate's just going to make the Ultras more, more dangerous, more powerful. Until they aren't. <laughs> until they die. Gives them a damage aura against those Marines. Uh, but yeah, they are starting to pop pretty quickly. So he... Oh, God. The flank of these two Ultras going to be enough to kill off all the marines here so very unfortunate for Aubin. it feels like we're watching Aubin kind of bleed out at the moment he is making a few battle cruisers which is nice ultras running up to try to attack this other base he's actually made an extra ebay this is to float over scvs and put them on hold position you can't break it uh with ling ultra if you do that actually it's a very good move that like is super super underutilized uh and in fact he lifts off well, he's just trying to get anything down there. If you can put anything that doesn't have high attack priority, like an SCV, SCVs or medics on the ramp, and then put this over and hold position underneath, it literally blocks melee units. Like it, it like they can't they can't get up because the Marines will be shooting them, so they'll just keep aggroing onto the Marines. So it's a good idea, but Aubin wasn't quick enough there. This is lifted and burning. We have attacks coming in from everywhere. Miso just super far ahead. Not playing that super aggressive style that I talked about so much, but just playing a very standard, well-chosen macro game here. Right? I think he he played it really beautifully. The droning uh, in between mutas was fantastic. Mm, yeah, this game is really, truly over. 
So, uh, you know, it, I gotta say, like, um, a, a very fast group, but I am impressed by our Zerg players, right? Like, Shao Shui didn't get to show too, too much, but he did win that ZVZ. Uh, definitely Miso shows that he is a bit stronger, without doubt. And GG, that is going to end Group G. It's going to be Shao Shui, our Chinese Zerg player, and Miso, our consummate pro playing Zerg. Moving on to that round of 16. Guys, I hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.